as both Washington and the and the world uh, sink deeper into collapse, gridlock, and paralysis, we've seen the stories from mainstream media and news outlets this week that uh, highlight the increasing increasingly hopeless efforts of political uh, and economic leaders to convince anybody that they have anything under control. They want to make us believe that their efforts at economic stimulus, uh, bailouts, recovery are, are doing anything other than enslaving large populations from Ireland to Indianapolis uh, in, in an ever-tightening trap of debt slavery. Budgets are being slashed, pension funds disappearing, uh, unemployment continues its relentless expansion, foreclosure rates are higher than ever worldwide, and governments everywhere are losing like all credibility. Um, this week, in a shot heard around the world, angry British students protesting uh, a tripling of their tuition rates smashed a window and splashed paint on a car occupied by Britain's Prince Charles, the future king, <coughs> and his wife Camilla. And while here in the U.S., Ron Paul is stating the obvious. We're begging for a revolution and massive civil unrest. Uh, huge, often violent demonstrations are erupting simultaneously all over Europe as what looks to be the coldest winter in recorded history collides I mean, collides with shortages of fuel, heat, and electricity. Uh, this week, the World News Desk at CollapseNet, we posted a story showing that 23,000 people have already frozen to death in Britain after making a choice about whether to buy food or save a few coins for their coin-operated radiators. In the meantime, the early ravages of inflation sparked by the Federal Reserve's QE2 are causing food prices to soar worldwide, even as food supplies and productivity shrink rapidly due to environmental collapse. Prices of vegetables increased just 20% last month in China, and you'd have to be blind not to notice the increase in food prices here. Instantly, it, it, excuse me, insanity, it seems, is the order of the day. So let's take a look at some of the choices, morsels of nuttiness from the last week. Here's a story from Planet Arc that came out December 10th. Beijing eyes new car, fee, car fees to ease congestion. A few months ago, we told you I collapsed at about a traffic jam in China that was so large it took six weeks to untangle. It was like 80 miles long. But no, China has to sell more cars, uh, about 40,000 a day. We'll get to that in a second, or they'll fall off a knife edge. Now, from the Wall Street Journal on December 9, auto sales surge in China, and guess what? In November, China sold 1.28 million new automobiles, all financed mostly, uh, almost all financed, I'm sure. Uh, that goes on the books of the ba never mind. That's more than 42,000 cars a day. A day. Each with, you know, ch crank those cars out. Don't worry about financing, underlying energy inputs and raw materials. Just get the sales on paper to show growth. doesn't matter that you can't breathe the air or see across the street. It doesn't matter that China can't get enough coal and is shutting down factories because there's not enough electricity. It doesn't matter that vegetable prices have risen 20% in a month. It doesn't matter that China has just issued government bonds, and I'm already getting wind of credit default swaps on the way for those. It doesn't matter that China's housing bubble is imploding or that inflation is starting its rampage. Just sell those cars. Just show growth. And make sure not to forget those seven gallons of oil that go in every tire. Mm. Any way you examine it, China's economic expansion is over. Uh, yet every major economist in the world today is quite clear that Chinese growth is the only thing keeping the remnants of, of our global economy alive. Here's, here's, here's another really choice one. Federal Reserve proposal would hinder halting of foreclosures. This is from uh, a good news wire, New Jersey and NJ.com. Uh, and the Fed is proposing a law that would repeal the right of rescission for homeowners who are who buy homes with documents that are frauds. I mean, the right of rescission is very clear. If you buy a house, you buy something else, and, and you were lied to in the paperwork, you can, you're out. But no, the Federal Reserve wants a law to legalize all of the lying the banks did on paper so that now if, if you want to sue over bad documents, you're going to be required to pay off the balance of the loan first. Just let that sink in for a minute. Here's another dandy. Congressional budget offices started weighing the benefits of bankruptcy or default for local governments. Let me tell you, the Republicans are drafting something right now that will allow states to go bankrupt. States don't have the right to go bankrupt now. Cities and counties do. But the, but the idea is, is that when a state or a city government or a county government goes bankrupt, they default on all the pension funds, they default on all the, all the benefits, they default on the pay, the salary, and everything else. It's, it's to break the unions. And one way or another, the unions are, are, are going to have to lose because it's a matter of resources, not politics now. Uh, we can't sustain that. 
anymore. But uh, this is this is this is the way collapse is playing out. Um, uh, so, okay, so here's here's the clincher. 2010 oil demand growth, second biggest ever. This is from Intercast on December 11. And uh, as I said in the, clearly in the movie Collapse, and I saw this coming, that demand would ret- start to return by, by 2010 and, uh, and 2011. And, and, and here we have that. Uh, uh, we have the second biggest demand year ever. The, the biggest was 07. Uh, but now it says, uh, this is from the International Business Time, the world uh, oil demand is to reach all-time high in 2011. It'll be 2% of the peak pre-recession level hit for demand in uh, 2007. Uh, 4% higher is, is what we're going to have in 2012. Now, what we know now is that peak oil happened in 06. That conventional oil is in serious decline, as, as we've all been saying. And this is the writing on the wall. This is the point where I said in the movie Collapse, we will go over the cliff and, and things will shut down when oil prices spike again and nobody can afford to buy that oil. That's, that's where we are. I wrote a book about that called Confronting Collapse. Uh, this is exactly uh, so. So that's that's this, this is the point. And 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 well, let me just give you all the rest of the good news here from Fortune magazine on December the 10th, no less. Mexican oil may not be worth it. Contarell is declining so fast that Mexico, which has always run the Pemex as as a state-owned enterprise, is now open to privatization so that companies can come in to try and use their technology to get the oil. But what Fortune says, there's probably not enough oil left to make that worthwhile. My, how far we have come. Um, this is the point at which everything com- comes down very fast. How fast, you ask? Well, uh, Chris Martinson uh, and Nicole Foss, a.k.a. Stonely of the Automatic Earth, and I are all in agreement that it could happen very soon and result in a near total collapse uh, of, uh, of the world economy within just a few weeks. And I mean the failure of governments and a catastrophic, catastrophic uh, economic failure where almost everything we know uh, and depend upon stops overnight. Both Foss and Martinson will be guests on this show very soon, and it's surprising how similarly we all see uh, the current crisis. The only thing I can think of to describe the civil unrest that I see coming around the world, and yes, here too, is is to liken it to the Rodney King insurrection here in L.A. in 92. Uh, I lived through that, and I saw it firsthand, and uh, when it erupts in the U.S., I suspect it will be a near simultaneous national meltdown. For those old enough to remember the 1960s and 70s, it would be like uh, Newark, Detroit, Los Angeles, Chicago, and every major city going up at once. <clears throat> if you missed my warnings on CollapseNet this week, it's time to take your gold out of safety deposit boxes and banks, check your, check your camping, survival, and emergency gear, and inventory your warm clothing. Uh, stories were published this week showing that Swiss banks have been refusing to release physical gold holdings from their vaults to people who owned it. It's fair warning. From the Guardian on uh, December 10th, now as we kind of wrap up this uh, this thing we do every week, <clears throat> from the Guardian on December 10th, German troops have been sent to France in symbolic defense of Euro. Hello? Uh, hello? Uh, uh, listen, uh, this is not to defend the Euro. This is because Europe is is anticipating what I am seeing very clearly a pan-European revolution. It's happened before. It happened in 1848, and it was an extremely violent resolution, which which brought us uh, probably the uh, the uh, progenitor of Henry Kissinger, a, a guy by the name of Metternich, um, and some really draconian. Uh, changes. Um, but Europe tends to kind of go all at once. And there's a number of other things that indicate that uh, that Europe is preparing for a pan-European revolution. Earlier this week, uh, uh, I, let me see if I get the countries right, France, Belgium, uh, Switzerland, the Netherlands, uh, I think Denmark, uh, Britain have all surrendered sovereignty and, and formed uh, joint airspace so that military planes can fly without any uh, hindrance or clearances uh, anywhere in that airspace, and I and I believe that's in anticipation of uh, deployment of resources to handle civil unrest. And Ireland is having second thoughts. Uh, the IMF will pos- postpone Irish loan release pending Irish Parliament. I got to do this in an Irish accent. Irish Parliament December fifteenth bailout decision from Zero Hedge December tenth. The Irish are not quite rolling over for the bailout. They're kind of looking at how badly they're going to get buffed. 
Anyway, um, uh, yeah, and uh, so the IMF is not going to release it un- until the Irish Parliament signs on the dotted lines. And, uh, you know, I, hey, listen, if, uh, if uh, my Irish cousins over there want to take to the streets, have at it. I'm with you in spirit. 